my mic's all the way over there. <laughs> I should have figured that out before I started the video. Uh, anyway, guys, this is David Boger from Slug Games, and uh, I just want to talk to you about this application that I was developing before uh, I actually switched over to Life is Full of Inspiration for the uh, Jim Jam. So uh, even though Life is Full of Inspiration is the first application that I've released as uh, Slug Games, it is, uh, it is not the first one I was working on. I was working on this application called Low Beams, uh, which is actually not game-related software. It's it's something entirely different. It's a little utility for uh, for Windows. Uh, sorry, not for Windows. It's uh, Windows, Linux, and Mac. It is cross-platform Java. Uh, that being said, it is dealing with a lot of platform-specific behavior. So there are platform-specific bugs, and right now it's really only tested on Windows. And I know for a fact I, I tested on Mac, and it does not work on Mac right now. Uh, I, I have an idea for how to fix that, and so I'm going to be trying things going forward and trying to get that working on Mac. Uh, I have not yet tested on Linux, so I can't really say anything about that. Um, but essentially what Low Beams is, is it's a convenient way of rendering a colored overlay on top of the desktop environment. And it's actually uh, specifically a semi-transparent overlay. Uh, and the main reason I made it was to dim my screen at night, and I'll talk about sort of the motivation down here uh, for why I, I wanted to do such a simple thing but make an application for it because you might be thinking dim a screen like uh, everybody can do that now right but actually there's a lot of problem with the existing solutions and so uh, I wanted to go ahead and make something that would make it a lot more easier and more reliable and cross-platform and all that um, and, and sort of more flexible for arbitrary setups and situations um, but you can actually use it for a number of things. Uh, you may want to just use it as like a highlighting effect during a presentation, or you may just want kind of a blue tint to your desktop or your whatever, just your computing experience. I don't know. There, there's different reasons why you might use it. Um, and so the motivation was essentially that uh, I was just dissatisfied with all the existing solutions. Like uh, if you've ever tried adjusting the hardware buttons on your monitor, you know, some monitors are easier than others. Uh, not all displays support saved profiles and things like that. And uh, also, like, there's all different kinds of hardware, right? Like, you may be working in a, you may be giving a presentation in a big presentation hall or an auditorium or a classroom or a lecture hall or something like that. And, uh, you know, the, the projector controls are either on some remote control that nobody has access to, it's in some storage room somewhere, or it's up in some control room at the top of the auditorium. And uh, it's, you know, then you have to add, you call out to somebody up there. I, I remember that actually happened in college a lot was professional professors would call out to somebody up in the control room working a projector and say, hey, can you please turn the brightness down of that or turn the speakers up or down or whatever. Uh, and that was always kind of an annoying thing. So this kind of helps solve that problem. You, you get a little bit more software control uh, from your system directly. So. Um, Another thing is there's just a lot of bugginess with GPU display settings. Like, for example, uh, you know, my NVIDIA control panel, this is actually a common problem I noticed online. A lot of people have the same problem as these brightness controls and things like that. Uh, they're actually bugged and, and um, you know, basically they don't work. You know, you can you can slide the values and get different values, but they don't actually apply any, any new settings to your... Uh, to your output so uh, you can't really reduce brightness that way and unfortunately the only fix really is to reinstall NVIDIA software completely you have to download a special application to scrub all the drivers completely and reinstall them completely or you have to reinstall Windows completely and so and obviously this is kind of platform dependent like maybe it's different on Linux maybe it's different on uh, Mac OS so I don't know it's it's just it's not very reliable uh, this is a good way to do it if it works for you and this is the way I used to do it but it just it it hasn't worked for me in a long time so um, that's something to consider there uh, as far as like nighttime color profiles I know a lot of people would just say oh use something like f.lux is a popular application uh, Windows also has something now uh, a night light setting that is uh, very comparable to f.lux it goes ahead and it just uh, it's not gonna work now because it's not nighttime but it, it applies a warmer color profile to your system uh, and so uh, you know that's okay but it doesn't really address the problem directly of a screen that's too bright uh, it's more for like uh, creating a pleasing color palette that helps you sleep at night as kind of a nightlight but it doesn't actually do anything for brightness the screen is still way way too bright if your screen is way too bright that's not going to solve it um, and then uh, you know 
also like if you're if you're talking about like a Mac or something like that, you know, Mac users have it especially easy and they might be saying, "Hey, why would we need this? Like Apple creates this wonderful hardware. They got all backlit keyboards and they have these wonderful buttons that uh, control the the display and they're really well supported in the software. They're generally not buggy. They're they're reliable. They always work. Uh, the the screens have these wonderful display ranges. You know that's all true on a single screen, just regular Apple setup with all Apple hardware. Yes, you have it covered. It's fantastic. They do a great great job of uh, you know the usability on that on that front. Um, however, you know you may be running uh, uh, I don't know. Uh, virtual machine on your system or uh, you know there, there's all different kinds of reason you may want to dim your virtual machine screen only but not the not the uh, actual uh, host machine or you may want to um, you know give a presentation again and you have to uh, you know dim one screen but not the other and there's all kinds of reasons why on a Mac you would still want this um, you know, maybe you're just controlling a Mac remotely. Maybe you're co connecting to a Mac remotely. Uh, you're you're providing some kind of uh, software, or sorry, uh, yeah, like a software-based uh, tech support or something. You know, like Amazon now has that button or whatever on on uh, the Fire OS devices or whatever they're called, uh, the tablets and things like that. You can click a button and you get somebody to help you right away, and they can take control of your device. And uh, you know, what happens if? Uh, uh, you're providing that kind of a service or something for your for your clients and you're trying to connect to their systems and you want to turn down the brightness remotely um, th this gives you an option to do that something like that so uh, there's all kinds of reasons why you may want to have sort of a s actual software application controlling uh, you know an overlay that dims your screen um, now approach uh, as far as far as efficiency this approach is actually not a very uh, efficient approach so like for example if you change your uh, GPU settings directly in the control panel or you change your hardware buttons uh, settings you know on your monitor that's actually gonna have basically no overhead right that's just gonna change you know maybe the light levels or the the color palette or whatever but that's not actually gonna affect the performance on your system uh, unfortunately low beams does and that's because it's actually using the windowing system of the the operating system and it's drawing semi-transparent overlays on top of whatever is on your desktop environment and unfortunately that transparency is somewhat expensive so uh, I will show you a little bit later that when I use low beams it is going to have uh, quite high GPU utilization there's nothing I can do about that that's just that's a side effect of doing it this way um, but again all these other th approaches had all these different problems and so for me uh, I was willing to accept that uh, kind of trade-off and uh, and so that's just that that's enough about the application. Let me demo it for you. Um, so it resides in your uh, system tray here. I got got it running already, uh, and I can actually double click or I can go ahead and right click and uh, you know about this. Just gives you a little bit of information. It's an MIT licensed application. Uh, you can see here it's the source code is freely available on our GitHub. So you can look at Slug Games Low Beams, and uh, it'll show you the. Uh, the, you, can, you can download the source code there and fork it and do whatever you want to do. Um, let's go ahead and uh, open the preferences here. And this is actually where we add overlays. So I'm going to go ahead and add an overlay here. Uh, now, I can add multiple overlays, but uh, unfortunately there's some bugs that uh, prevent multiple overlays from working well together. So I'm, I'm still working on those. It's not released yet, but uh, I'm trying to iron out those bugs. And uh, also, I don't have this column working yet. There, there should be a choice box here that lets you choose a target screen from the available display devices on the system. Uh, that's something that I still have to add. It's not quite there yet. So right now, it's only going to work on the primary screen. Uh, but again, when I release it, it should have those things working. So let's go ahead and remove some of these. We have a single overlay here. We're going to go ahead and enable it. And you can see by default, it just kind of dims the screen. I, I have this set to a default, which is basically the the uh, use case that I mentioned, where I just want to dim a screen. And so, you know, you have this cursor window. Uh, the cursor window actually serves a technical function I guess or a technical purpose it's not just there for highlighting effect although it is kind of cool for that uh, it was kind of a side effect and when I used it I was like hey that's actually kind of cool I bet people would like that um, and you can actually adjust the size of this cursor window so if you wanted to make it really small you could go ahead and make it almost invisible uh, or you can make it really big and pronounced and that way uh, you know people will really see what you're highlighting I could highlight a big chunk of text like this <coughs> oh, excuse me. Um, I usually put it pretty big, but uh, you know, somewhere in the middle is nice too. The default setting is not bad. Um, 
And again, because it is somewhat heavy on GPU utilization, I may as well go show you that now. Um, depending on, so it used to be, I don't know what happened, the last time I ran this, for some reason, uh, it was not the correlation that I was expecting, but at least most of the time that I've run this application, the lower I set the cursor window tracking frequency, the lower the GPU utilization. Uh, I have been making changes, so that's subject to change. It should be that way, but uh, again, I just have it there as a setting to, in case like your system's really struggling to run it, um, you can try to tone that down a little bit. If I set it higher, I think the GPU, yeah, there we go. The, uh, it's kind of it's kind of unpredictable, honestly. Like you could see it jumped up to 33% there for a little bit, and then for some reason now it's at 18. If I move it faster, it tends to go up a tiny bit. So I don't I don't really know exactly what's going on there as far as uh, uh, the correlation. Um, again, it it used to be for some reason most of the time I've tested this application, it's pretty correlated with this. The higher I set it, the higher the GPU utilization, and vice versa. Um, but that seems to have gone away for some reason. I don't know why that is. Uh, <laughs> but again, I've been making changes to this, and I haven't run it in like a week or something. So it's it's uh, uh, you know that's subject to change. There's no there's no guarantee there. Um, Opacity. This just kind of, you know, if it's really, really, if you want it really dark, you can do something like that, uh, you know, or you can set it to almost transparent, um, and you can go ahead and disable it right there, or re-enable it. You can get kind of a color tint. You can set the color that you want. Maybe you want some really funky color. Uh, I don't know why you would want this color. Um, honestly, most of the colors are not very useful for like dimming the screen because as you go up to to really high levels, you're talking about like making the screen white. You know what I mean? And so that, that's kind of that's kind of unpleasant. But uh, hey, the options there if you want it. There, that's what that's what the sliders are for. Do do whatever you want. Um, I tend to just do one color. So like for example, if I want kind of a nice blue, maybe maybe a purple color. I, I find that purple is quite pleasing. So let me go ahead and make kind of a purple. And set the opacity down a little bit lower. I can actually turn it up just a hair. That's kind of a nice, like almost a lavender or something like that. Uh, this is actually a pretty nice setting. I like to kind of mess with a kind of a lavender uh, color there. Uh, and I am planning on improving sort of the color choosing options, but it's not like a critical feature right now, so that's a little bit lower priority. Um, and again, you could you could theoretically add a bunch of overlays and set them to different screens and uh, uh, do all kinds of different things on a per screen granularity. And I'm also planning on adding a the ability to link overlay configuration. So for example, you could say create another overlay and link it to the configuration of the first one. And that way you can move them all together. Like you could have a primary overlay where you adjust the settings and then everything else is bound to that. Uh, so you can control multiple screens at once. Um, that's something I'm also planning on adding. It's not in, in yet, but uh, it's it's in the works. So Anyway, that's uh, that's low beams, and again, you can go. It, it resides in your system tray, so you could go ahead and close out that window, and it'll just sit there. Uh, and I can go ahead and use this now at, at night. It would be a much more pleasant experience, not blinding my eyes, and you have kind of a highlighting effect. So, uh, you know, that's that's quite nice for you know being able to see clearly what it is. Uh, you know, you don't have to, have to worry about it ruining like uh, your reading experience. For example, you could read like this, and uh, you'll be able to see the text nice and clearly. So. Um, that's low beams. Thank you very much for checking it out, and uh, hopefully it'll be useful for people. Uh, I'm kind of excited to see what uh, what people say as they start trying it, and I think it's going to be uh, useful for a lot of situations. So, uh, thank you very much for for checking it out, and uh, tune in to Slug Games for you know further updates. Peace.